I think that entertainment will still grow. It's a part of our life. And it's becoming more and more inside our life. We see that services like uh, Netflix and others, they're growing, they're going deeper in our life. I think gaming is going deeper in our life as well. So I, like, I see that market will grow, revenue will grow. You need to understand how to take that revenue from the market. So that's all. Hello, my name is Manu and welcome to Be Ahead of the Game. In this series of interviews, we chat with people to know how to bring the best games to the world. In this episode specifically, we talk with Sergi, our lead UA, and we will learn about the challenges of user acquisition in 2023, how to address them and the future of the industry as a whole. Welcome. Good morning, Sergi. A pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Could you introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks for having me here. So my name is Sergey. I am a lead UA manager at Ted Square Games. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think this is the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you start your career in user acquisition? Yeah, so it was a pretty interesting path. So I started my career as a developer, as a front-end developer many nice. years ago. Uh, but at some point of time, I just understood that uh, just a simple development, it's maybe not enough for me. So I was interested in how, like in total, the picture of products looks like. Mm -hmm. And after that, I uh, became a product manager. So I was involving into development the projects uh, from the position of the manager. And uh, I think I was lucky because all of my projects at that point of time, they were connected to the ad tech. It was the uh, beginning of the era of um, uh, affiliate marketing. Mm. Probably you know about yeah, this. Course. So uh, at that point of time, uh, we were building the DSPs, SSPs, uh, like ad exchanges to the affiliate marketers who was growing at that point of time. And I think that uh, this was the beginning of my path. And uh, at some point I joined uh, Playrix. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was uh, working there as a UA manager. After that, as a lead UA manager, I was leading the programmatic department, like was building it from scratch. So yeah, I think it's it's the career, my career path. <laughs> awesome. And now knowing that uh, that you have worked in development, in product, also, yeah, what do you see as the key challenges for user acquisition in 2023? Uh, so, first of all, it's the war and recession. Mm -hmm. So, right now, the total economical situation in, in the global market is not healthy. So, uh, definitely, we are in the B2C field. So, that's why users is decreasing the amount of spend that they want to spend on different goods. Um, so, I think this is the first problem. Uh, the second problem is that uh, right now, market is uh, shifting a little bit. So, basically, we all know about the privacy from the Apple. We know that Google wants to implement this as well. So, now you see companies are more cautious on investing money. Um, I think that <clears throat> the, the companies who are a little bit afraid and mm. less risky, they yeah they don't want to invest money uh, or they want to calculate everything. But um, if it will look like even offline, yeah. So let's look broader, yeah. Mm. So the offline business is still working. Some of these offline businesses is pretty big enough, and they do not have any kind of IDFA or other parts. So and they are pretty healthy. So and they they are also investing not um, like everyone can say like, but when you are selling goods, you have the price of the goods and you have the uh, uh, the price for the for the user, and that's why you have a margin. So you need you you don't need to weigh this lifetime value of the user. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, probably connected to the small companies. But when it comes to the big brands, for example, Samsung or like Walmart, etc., 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 so they are decreasing the price and they're looking about their users in the same way as we are. So the lifetime value of the users, how mm -hmm. to sell more and more and more products to that users. So I think in this case, we are similar and uh, like they're living a good life still. <laughs> so I think that we are secured as well. Nice, nice. So in, con in contrast to those challenges, what do you see right now, the drivers on user acquisition or how, well, or better said, how, what drives your teams right now yeah, to actually optimize the user acquisition funnel? Yeah, so first of all, I think it's the data. So mm -hmm. how we are looking at the data, how we are analyzing the data, because right now everyone has the access to the data. But the main problem, and from my experience, this is the main problem for all companies across the market, is that 
how you will look on the data and what decisions you will make from this data. This is the, the big problem. So I think uh, this is the first point where we are good at and mm -hmm. we are trying to invest more and more uh, efforts into this. And probably sometimes we're even inventing new uh, roles inside the company, which will be connected specifically to the analyzing the marketing data and to like parts of the marketing data. Uh, the second part, I think it's uh, creativity. So as I said, from the offline business, we see that uh, creativity is uh, working pretty well. Mm -hmm. And like the success, it's like the difference between your LTV of the user and, and the cost of user acquisition. Yeah, so the, the cost of acquisition of that user. So uh, if we will find the way how to decrease the price of the acquisition, in this case, we will generate uh, big profits. So I think like two, two parts here. So first of all, how you're working with the data. Second, how you are managing your creativity. Because like creativity, some, sometimes when we're thinking about creativity, in our mind, we have some kind of artists who like from their heart producing the art or whatever. But if we will look right now on the growing trend of mind journey and all like AI tools, mm -hmm. we see that creativity can be quantified. So we see that AI tools can grow. Yeah, right now it's a lot of discussions. Uh, does this AI tools develop uh, this kind of creativity by themselves, etc.? Maybe right now, no. But I think that it's just a first step in this in this field. And uh, we are also trying to understand what's the like what's the key factors of our creativity success? Mm. Because uh, just blindly develop like new creatives without understanding why they are performing well, I think it's incorrect and we are trying to avoid it here. Nice, nice. So talking a bit further about AI, do you see any other trends that right now will actually kind of affect or change the user acquisition strategy in the near future? So like to be honest, AI is already implemented in UA a long time ago. So we already have the algorithms from Google, Facebook and uh, almost all other networks. They are working based on optimization towards users, uh, which is like, which can generate, for example, ROAS or generate a specific price for action, like in-app action. Mm -hmm. So it's probably a lot, um, not AI in total, it's like uh, machine learning algorithms, etc. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty like in, in, in the same way, I think. Um, I don't think that the algorithms of uh, Apple and Google will change. And I don't think that we will see automated UA managers or whatever. It will be good at some point, I think. <laughs> I'm always saying that uh, I want to uh, like work in a company uh, and at the end, my ideal goal to be fired from the company. So <laughs> the processor should work without me. So <laughs> this, 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 this is my ideal uh, situation. So I think that at some point we will see that UA automation is going to to the way where we can decrease the level of uh, user acquisition work, but it will be only manual work. So this is the main problem that people right now are afraid about the tools that develop to help them, like to decrease the amount of manual work they need to do. So I, I believe that uh, AI trend is already in digital marketing for a long period of time. But I think that right now is, is the main important part for me is the um, this kind of AI creativity part. Mm. Because we have a chat GPT, we have a mind journey, we have a lot of different other tools and they can decrease the the time for uh, creativity development. So development of creatives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And second, I feel that these tools can give us the possibility to uh, fix the problem of creativity fatigue. For example, if we want to develop new match tree application or whatever, we will go and we'll copy Playrix app. If we want to develop a new creative, we will go and we will copy the creative of the top performer. Yeah, so like the the the, the advertiser who is spending the thousands of millions uh, per uh, per month. So in this case, all creatives are familiar. But uh, if we will look from the psychological perspective, from the how users are reacting, they will react uh, better on something new, fresh, like fresh ideas. So I think that AI can help with this. So the because uh, in this case, AI is not biased. So you're just given some kind of keywords 
and the AI, uh, AI is producing a lot of different uh, variations about what exactly uh, you can get. And after that, you can decide. So, and maybe you will see something extra. So I think these kind of tools can, first of all, save a lot of time for development of the new creatives. And I think also they can give us the possibility to fix this uh, creativity issue. Nice. So <clears throat> based on that example, because I think that it's really relevant right now, the, this systematization, I would call it, of, uh, of creative and user acquisition, do you think that it will also bring an advantage or more potential to small players in the industry? Yeah. <clears throat> if we will speak about the user acquisition right now, so in order to be successful, you need to invest a lot of uh, time and effort into uh, creatives because um, the algorithms right now already know uh, if you gave them uh, the right signals, they know what type of users they need to buy. And like with Google, with Facebook, with other networks, you don't need to invest a lot of time on micromanagement. So you don't need to go and optimize like small things in terms of traffic. But the main part of your work is to develop the new creative, to cooperate with the designers, etc., etc., motion designers, etc. So I think that these tools can give the possibility to the small guys who is pretty smart to operate faster and also it can give them the competitive advantage. And I think it's pretty good, to be nice. honest. Awesome. So now we address a bit what are kind of the the advantages or future that you see on new tools with in user acquisition in your area, what challenges do you see coming? Yeah. Uh, as I said, like the, the global situation on the market. So uh, this is the first problem and the second problem, the algorithms. So the yeah. algorithms right now, uh, because of the privacy, because of everything, they are trying to be non-transparent with the, with the advertisers. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, we need to deal with it and we need to find the ways how to operate in this kind of non-transparent environment. Because previously, uh, digital marketing and the key specifics of the digital marketing was the transparency. Mm -hmm. So we see a lot of things. We understand uh, who our users, we understand like, like thousands of features about the, the traffic and we can operate with that feature. So previously it was like pretty interesting to, to do this. Uh, right now it's, uh, it's combined. And touching a bit, uh, you, you mentioned a lot privacy. Yeah. Um, do you have any, do you have or recommend any strategies to go around it? Yeah. Because we know that right now it's a challenge or how to address it yeah, with your team, with your strategies. Anything that you can actually so add? So the, the, the first, you need to be aligned with privacy <laughs> policy. It costs a lot <laughs> yeah, to be exactly. not aligned with this stuff. So, so yeah, the, the first part, you need to be aligned. Uh, in terms how to work with this, so I think each company is uh, preparing a specific path. So uh, right now in TSG, we found the way how we can div divide our iOS paid traffic versus our mm, iOS organic. So right now we are pretty... Uh, good at understanding our iOS performance and mm. we see that our iOS traffic is growing right now successfully. Each application is unique. Uh, we need to understand that uh, we will not find the silver bullet that will fix everything. So each time when, when you will start with the new app, you need to understand the specifics of this app. After that, test it, understand what's the best practices right now. So yeah, you need to know a theory and after that you need to go and practice with your existing application because sometimes uh, it will be tricky to explain that you need to do one, two, three, four and uh, you will be successful. Mm -hmm. So Nice. So if we dig a bit deeper on strategy, yeah, what, what are some techniques that you would use with your teams to generate more installs or, re or increase their retention or improve their ROAS, for example? Yeah, so uh, first of all, we need to understand the specifics of each network. Mm -hmm. So from my experience, I was working from the uh, two sides of this business. So from one side, I was working with the EAP applications, IAP applications. And from the another side, I was working with the IAA applications. So where the 100% of your revenue comes from ads. So I understand who is the bigger in terms of revenue for the guys who is selling traffic. And I understand uh, 
what publishers are interesting to the guys who want to buy it and generate uh, IAPs inside the app. So first of all, we need to understand the specifics of each uh, network or, or of each channel. In this case, we will uh, understand what exact technique, like what exact UA techniques you need to operate. Because right now, for example, if we will speak about a plugin, they have uh, different optimization models. So you can optimize towards ROAS, you can optimize towards ROAS day three, day seven, day zero, uh, cost per purchase, cost per event, different days. So they have a variety, the complex of optimization models that can give you traffic. And that models are different because uh, inside the models uh, you can't find like uh, maybe from the mathematical and statistical standpoint they are the same, but the execute of the algorithm is different. So you need to understand the specifics of these uh, channels and you need to take uh, only working tools for your uh, product. Right. So you, you think or you see strategies being tailor fitted to each product. Yeah, sure, because we need to understand that we are dealing with the businesses. It's like, uh, I don't know, let's imagine you are going to the um, salsa club and you say like, okay, I want to, I don't know, learn uh, tango. So they will say like, okay, maybe we can do that, but we don't know what will be the uh, the the the, the um, outcome. Outcome, yeah, thanks. So what will be the outcome of this? So the same way with with uh, with algorithms. So they have access to the traffic. They have traffic. They have some. Um, they have some models, etc. But you need to understand what will fit for your product and you need to use it. If you will use everything, uh, probably it will be not successful and you will spend a lot of money uh, into this. Nice. So we have seen in the past uh, year or so yeah, that there's, there has been an increase on the price of users. Yeah. Uh, how, how would you say that teams right now on UA can cope with these uh, high prices? And if you see any reasons why those high prices have actually gone in some cases through the roof. CPIs are growing each year. And uh, I think one of the things why we're working and we're successful, our product teams are working well. So they're increasing our LTV from year to year. So in terms of why it happened, uh, I, I think it was uh, organically because uh, Apple implemented this a ATT stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so the majority of budget starts to switch to Google and uh, we saw bigger presence of uh, advertisers and bigger budgets uh, in Android. And in this case, it was organically that CPI will go up. And I think that uh, specifically for Android, in this case, the guys just increased the payback period of time. So for example, previously it was, I don't know, like one year, maybe right now it's one and a half year, maybe more. It's mm -hmm. depend on the business, uh, depend on the product as well. So I think this was the, the first part. Uh, from the iOS perspective, I think it's uh, just because of the inefficiency from the very beginning. So nobody understands uh, from the very beginning how to buy effectively, uh, how to acquire those users who were generating pretty good numbers. So and, and that's why probably it was a lot of experiments. That's why the average per market uh, was higher than, uh, than usual. But uh, as we see right now, uh, previously it was Android always bigger in terms of installs and everything like this. Right now, Android, to be honest, is smaller in terms of installs. Cool. iOS is bigger. So <laughs> I think that Apple, after implementation of this kind of um, uh, ATT rules for everyone, Apple made uh, the switch that right now everyone is buying based on contextual targeting. Mm -hmm. Maybe some kind of small percentage of user groups are still buying based on the idea phase. So, uh, yeah, I think that uh, in, in this case, that portion of users with the idea phase, the price for them extremely high, like maybe much higher than it was previously mm. because it's super uh, rare and <laughs> guys on the market. And in terms of the guys with the, uh, who is operating with the SCAD, who is do not allow for advertisers to track, their, uh, to track them, uh, the prices there is like pretty average and we're trying to buy on the contextual uh, targeting. So do you think ATT 
kind of laterally benefit Google? Uh, I think it, uh, from the very beginning, yes. Mm -hmm. So the, I, I know that like previously, your healthy share of spend should be like 50-50 mm -hmm. or maybe 60-40 uh, to 60 iOS, 40 Android. So like from my experience, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now it's opposite. So it's like 70-30 and 70 it's Android and 30 it's iOS. Mm -hmm. And everyone is trying to scale this to the, to the, to the level of uh, previous spends. So that's why I think that, yeah, this kind of ATT stuff benefits Google, but Google is, I think it will implement this kind of similar uh, stuff uh, in near future. Uh, the main question for me, how they will implement this. So basically what will be inside this uh, privacy, um, uh, privacy policy from, 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 from Google. But yeah, let's see. Okay, nice. So you also, I want to touch about uh, LTB. Yep. Yeah, and you touch it a bit. Um, do you have any good strategies that you use or that you would recommend to people about how to calculate it, how to maybe forecast it and apply it? Yeah. Yeah. If we will look at uh, products with admonization, the main part and the main revenue comes from retention. Mm -hmm. So if you have higher retention, it means that your LTV will be higher. Uh, in IAP applications, you don't need to, to be care a lot about retention. You need to care about retention of your payers because your revenue comes from well your said. payers so that's why you need to care about retention of your payers so in this case um, like my recommendation first of all you need to understand the payback period so what's the payback period for your business you you want to get so for example i want to get my money back with 30 percent margin in one year you're right or, yeah, yeah yeah or six months etc because it's hard to calculate the optimal point to be honest and uh, uh, we were trying to do this uh, a few times, etc. But if we will look from the like economical standpoint of this, we do not understand the elasticity of the market, and the elasticity is changing each time. So in this case, uh, we can't say that uh, I don't know, like six months or one year is the best for us. So I think it's just a like hard decision from the business that I want to bring my money back. In this period of time, it depends on the deepness of your pockets. To be honest, so uh, the, the, if you can wait, you should wait. Uh, this is first. So second, you need to understand the specific of your product. So if it's IAP, you need to use one techniques. So if it's uh, based on the ad revenue, you need to look at the models that can somehow include retention in your LTV prediction. Because uh, <clears throat> if you will just um, predict based on, I don't know, like log function or whatever, how your uh, revenue, cumulative revenue will look like. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, it can vary from um, different types of traffic. So for example, if you have a lower retention, it means that you will eventually will have a lower LTV as well. And uh, I think a third here will be that you need to simplify things. So everyone is trying to go into some kind of super advanced techniques, uh, machine learning, etc., etc., etc. I was speaking with a lot of uh, machine learning guys. Mm -hmm. the, the guys who knows really, they are saying that probably you don't need this. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because uh, you need a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So if it's a new business and you do not have a lot of data, machine learning will not work. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of assumptions that are yeah, not yeah, practical. Yeah. So no? the, the machine learning works only if you have a lot of data and if you have a lot of features. Uh, because in this case, for example, if you have, I don't know, like 100 million uh, revenue per year and you want to be 5% efficient in your LTV, it's a big portion of money. Mm. Yeah. So uh, when you are a business with 1 million revenue per year, yeah, it's still pretty big, but in this industry, no. Uh, and you want to increase your uh, efficiency by 5%. Mm. For, I, I don't think that you will you will succeed to mm. be honest. So uh, from from the very beginning, use simple techniques as simple as possible, and uh, try to grow. Uh, when you will already big enough, 
Only after that you need to invest into this kind of uh, more advanced techniques. How do you choose your marketing mix? Uh, like right now I am choosing it because I had experience with the um, um, uh, from the monetization part. So I, 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 I understood uh, which uh, ad networks are generating the most of revenue for IAA guys. Mm. So, and in this case, I understand to whom you need to go. <laughs> so I understand that uh, one, two, three, four, five networks, they are generating the most of revenue for that guys. It means that they have the most of demand and supply. Mm. So you need to go to that, uh, uh, to that um, mix of networks and try to uh, be successful with them. So do you think Admon and UA should be kind of together or in close contact um, or bridge uh, knowledge in between I them? I think yes. So if you want to like, because it's like it's supply and demand. Totally. Yeah. So basically it should be in the, in the close contact. So you need to understand uh, what's the changes inside Admon and after that you will see them inside uh, UA as well. Mm -hmm. I can say you why because uh, when uh, uh, Apple implemented ATT mm -hmm. we saw that amount of revenue from Facebook decreased dramatically yeah. and we see this the same in UA so we can't buy so efficiently in UA as well from uh, Facebook. So, and we do not have that amount of traffic that we were buying previously. And I also can explain why, because Facebook is not buying non-IDFA traffic. Mm. So they are buying mainly uh, users with IDFAs um, and, and that's all. So if you understand this part from the admonization, you will understand that maybe you need to start shifting your uh, trajectory, like UA trajectory for different networks. Nice. So, how does the future look like for bright. user acquisition? <laughs> <laughs> bright, only bright. <laughs> uh, yeah, to be honest, I think it's, it's bright. It's like how you're looking on this. I think that the field is growing. This is the main part. I think that the field will grow. I know that uh, one part of this market will grow triple in next five years or maybe less. So I think that uh, it's a good signal that it's a healthy niche where the market is growing, where the market will push you to generate revenue. So I think that inside UA, uh, we will get more and more powerful tools and we will decrease the level of manual work. I think that the main shift will be is that the UA managers will need to increase their skills. So they will they will need to start be more data driven because right now everyone is saying that they're data driven, but they do not have a lot of like hard skills to, to prove it's that. It's a trendy word to have. Yeah, it's like a trendy word. I am like a data driven, but sometimes you can speak with the UA managers and can and they can explain like, I see this one day where everything was fine and after another day when everything is bad. And for me, it sounds pretty strange. Uh, so I think that first of all, UA managers will need to adapt to changes mm. and uh, they will need to increase the level of their math skills, statistical skills, uh, working with the data, understanding the data. Because right now, uh, when you will get these powerful tools, you will decrease the manual work. So you will have much more time to do. And in this case, I think uh, UA managers who knows how to do some kind of ad hoc analysis and stuff, who can find the growing points will win. Uh, if you will be on the same, um, how to say, on the same uh, site uh, where you were, where you will try to do your manual work by yourself, and you will not use the uh, the new tools that will appear, I think you will lose this uh, because it's like right now it's clearly that the market is going into this direction, mm -hmm. and we can even see this because, for example, ChatGPT probably the cost of daily expenses is around 3 million or more or more so basically on a monthly basis they are generating minus 100 million mm. or more mm. and this number will grow but the valuation of the company 30 billion right now and will grow so it means that the market sees great potential with these kind of tools and i think it's not only this tool so uh, tools will uh, will 
will grow and uh, we will see new and new tools. And from my side, it will be a little bit silly to say that no, it's something strange and we don't need to use this. We will do the same way how we were doing this previously. We already experimenting with the tools inside the TSG and uh, we see uh, early signals that it's a great potential to be honest. So I think like you need to adapt to this. So from my perspective, I understand that I will need to adapt. <laughs> I am ready for this and I'm pretty happy about this. So I, th I see future only bright. Um, maybe other guys are a little bit skeptical about this and uh, they see more challenges. Yeah, it's also one point of view, but I think it's your behavior, how you think about this. If you think that it's a, because I think that even with the problems that we have in the current world right now, I see that right now it's a really, really good time for companies to start and to grow, to be more uh, like more risky, etc. Because for example, the COVID situation, everyone was thought that it's the end of the world yeah so everyone was super afraid and uh, we also thought that like it's 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 a problem for gaming but if we will look back to the period of time and uh, what we've done in TSG at that period of time I think we were risky and we scaled dramatically and we benefit a lot from this and the same for other companies as well so I think the same period of time right now and the same like probably in future so only when we will see that people don't want to play games <laughs> and I don't believe that we will that see will this. Happen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so only at that point of time we need to be afraid. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think that entertainment will still grow. It's a part of our life. It's becoming more and more inside our life. We see that services like uh, Netflix and others, they're growing, they're going deeper in our life. I think gaming is going deeper in our life as well. So I like I see that market will grow, revenue will grow. You need to understand how to take that revenue from the market. So that's all. So also talking about the future, yeah, uh, to conclude kind of your predictions, through the years we have seen that there has been a couple of big acquisitions and consolidations of big players, especially in the area of UA. Based on that, do you still see potential for new players to come into the picture yeah, that can influence actually the big players or big consolidations that have happened? I think it's always the, the, the time for that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it will happen in near future, mm -hmm. but the same Facebook. Uh, before that, it was, uh, what was the name of the network? Do you know? Uh, my world or something hey, like something like some, that, some, yeah. something like that. So MySpace, MySpace, MySpace yeah. yeah. So it was MySpace, and everyone was thinking that okay, that's all. So you can't go into social networks because we have a MySpace. But after that, we found that Facebook can grow and uh, it became a leader in this niche. Right now, everyone is think thinking that Google, you are going to the Google search, the Google is a giant. Everyone thought that like everything is secured, yeah? We have a chat GPT, new, new tool that mm. appears on the market. And right now, everyone is using this as a, as a search. And Google is a little bit afraid of this, or maybe not a little. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it looks like that the market is changing. It's depend on what kind of product you will present to the market. If it will be, because when you are growing and this kind of a consolidations, they are good and bad. So from one side, they are good because you're big enough and you are, you have more power, power, etc. But from other side, you are, uh, you should implement the processes inside the organization so you can not see the new and fresh trends. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's always the possibility to the, new, uh, to the new companies to grow. I don't think that we will see new Facebook in near future, yeah? Mm -hmm. But with ChatGPT, to be honest, I am pretty interested in where it will go. So maybe it, will, it can become a competitor to Google. And maybe they will also implement some ads and maybe if they will have this kind of more advanced AI technology, they can give more effectiveness in terms of um, um, user acquisition to, to the companies. So we don't know this yet, yeah, but we will see. 
Uh, I know the, it's a funny story about the owner of the ChatGPT. So basically, uh, they are not generating revenue right now. They are not generating profit, only losses. And everyone is asking like uh, when, like the business model is not there. Like you, you will not generate revenue, etc. And he is a, in, and he probably uh, he has a really interesting answer about this. So he said that I am good at developing the AI tools and when it will be ready, I will ask AI how to monetize my product. That, that's a very smart <laughs> so, answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, I think that we are going to the, to the era where the, the tools will be different mm -hmm. and we don't know yet how it will benefit the, the field, but I think it will, it, it will, yeah, it will be more precise uh, targeting even without touching the privacy. And I think that uh, it's for sure can be, can be developed. Uh, in terms of already existing applications, like right now it's still growing some kind of new uh, MMPs. Uh, right now everyone, uh, everyone is speaking about a little bit different approaches to, for uh, attribution the data mm -hmm. because of the privacy, because everyone is trying to go to the, to the new areas of advertisement. So everyone is speaking about uh, MMM, uh, etc. So I, I, th I think that there are some possibilities to the companies on the market. I don't think that they will happen this year, next year, etc. So I think that we are in the, how to say, in the middle right now or uh, at the age uh, where everyone is shifting from one type of tools to another type of tool. Mm -hmm. So probably in five or maybe more years, we will see new players on the market. Awesome. Sergi, you have a lot of uh, knowledge in this industry, uh, especially uh, in uh, user acquisition. For anyone that is new, yeah. Do you have any advices yeah, that they, for them joining a user acquisition team, uh, working with user acquisition, any advice that you can give them yeah, that uh, based on your experience will help them to be more yeah. prepared and become better? I think the, the, the best way to succeed, to be hired to the good company. After that, you can learn a lot. Mm -hmm. You can get access to the to a lot of data, a lot of tools, a lot of knowledge, uh, knowledgeable people who can teach you. And uh, this will be your, I think, best uh, <laughs> career start. Uh, it's like in all other industries. If you want to understand how to develop jewelry, you need to go to the master and he will start to teach you the same. So you need to join a good company uh, and after that, you will probably grow if you are smart enough. Learn from experience. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much for today. It was a pleasure having you here. Uh, I a lot. learned a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs>